presenting So I'm presenting a uh, question for you of uh, October, West African College of Physician 2023. Uh, the question says, a 65 year old who weighs 97 kilogram in a previous football, uh, and is, uh, is a previous football player who damaged the right anterior crucial ligament and has been staying alone after his wife died five years ago. He is also a non hypertensive a newly, a newly diagnosed diabetes mellitus. He smokes 20 cigarettes a day and consumes alcohols of 28 units per week. Patients uh, present with left knee pain worse when ascending and descending the stairs. Uh, option A uh, says, what, what are the differential diagnoses? How will you investigate? Uh, X-ray of the knee suggests of chondral sclerosis is uh, a hint. Option C says, what is the final diagnosis? What are the risk factors in this patient? And uh, list four classes of drugs used in the management. So uh, based on the history given, uh, the right knee pain, um, sorry, left knee pain, an obese man weighing 97 kg, a previous footballer, uh, and then consumption of alcohol and cigarette smoking. Uh, my, my differentials include left knee osteoarthritis, uh, gouty arthritis, or pseudo gout, septic arthritis, palindromic rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, quadriceps tendinopathy. So these are my differentials. So uh, by investigation, uh, the commonest uh, tool is the uh, radiography of the knee joints. So it will pre um, patient. Uh, so the radiograph will demonstrate uh, joint space narrowing, subchondral sclerosis. Articular, sur articular surface or uh, corticular irregularity, the osteophytes at the margin of the joint, you can see them there, the subchondral seats. So for other differential mentioned above, the X-ray features will just show varying degrees of sub-tissue swelling. If it's subject arthritis, you will see uh, those uh, swelling there of the knee joint. So MRI of the knee will also demonstrate joint uh, effusion and synovial thickening. Uh, which is indicator of synovitis, subchondral bone marrow edema, uh, and or cyst, cartilaginous defects, which could be facial or full thickness, and uh, it could also demonstrate evidence of bursitis. Um, we can also uh, do uh, arthrothentesis to obtain the synovial fluid for the analysis. So, in case of uh, uh, septic arthritis, which is among our differentials, we can do microscopic culture and sensitivity uh, to determine the uh, agent involved. Um, a full blood count will demonstrate leukocytosis and anemia, and it will also demonstrate elevated uh, ESR. Um, in uh, osteoarthritis, the uh, synovial fluid analysis could demonstrate a uh, normal viscosity with WBC count of less than 2,000, as again, if it's a, a septic arthritis, which will demonstrate leukocytosis. So uh, gouty arthritis is also one of our differentials. We can also uh, do analysis of the fluid uh, in gout to demonstrate needle-shaped monosodium urate crystals, uh, which demonstrate negative bifringent under polarized light. Uh, pseudo gout will uh, demonstrate a rhomboid shaped calcium pyrophosphate and uh, dehydrated crystals, uh, which shows positive bifringence in a polarized light. Uh, also, we can go and do uh, ahead and do arthroscopy, which will confirm the diagnosis of AA. Uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, especially the palindromic, we can uh, demonstrate, uh, we can analyze, we do serum analysis for ANA and CCP rheumatoid factor. And uh, also, uh, uric acid is very, very important, especially in the case of the gout. So th the final diagnosis is left knee osteoarthritis, built on the risk factors we have highlighted earlier on. So the risk factors uh, include the older age, which is one of the most important risk factors, overweight. We know uh, the ob obesity, uh, there is mechanical stress on the joint, especially the weight bearing joints. So repeated joint stress and previous injuries, being a footballer, 
uh, and then the previous history of the knee injury could demonstrate that uh, diabetic mellitus, excessive alcohol ingestion, and uh, smoking, uh, significant quantity of cigarettes, they are all uh, risk factors in this patient. So the classes of the drugs include the simple analgesics like the paracetamol, which is the initially the uh, first line of management. If patients do not respond, we can go ahead and use the NSAID, which could be either COX-1 or COX-2 inhibitors. Uh, if they failed, we can go, uh, we can step ahead to use the opioids, uh, the, like the cocodamols, morphine, and so on. Uh, topical uh, uh, um, creams include uh, the topical NSAIDs and also the topical uh, capsaicin uh, uh, utilized regularly for the OA. Intraarticular steroid injections uh, also has a very important role to play, especially if patients uh, fail to respond to previous classes of drugs mentioned above, uh, which include the uh, uh, intraarticular um, methylprednisolone, or uh, it could be given. So uh, these are the uh, the uh, the question, the answers to the question ends here. So I don't know if I can continue to uh, for yeah, overview of RA. Yeah, you can give an overview. So, uh, yeah, oh. you can give an overview. Yeah, but you don't All right. dwell too much on them. Yes, just give summary, summary yeah. move. All right, I will be as brief as possible. So I will talk on uh, overview of uh, osteoarthritis based on this uh, synopsis from introduction down to conclusion. So and, uh, by way of introduction, Osteoarthritis is the most important, is the most common chronic joint disorder. It usually results in pain and deformity, ultimately leading to chronic disability, uh, rapidly becoming significant medical and financial burden in the world uh, uh, whose population is aging. So it's a degenerative disease that affects various tissues surrounding the joint, such as the articular cartilage, subchondral bone, synovial membrane, and the ligaments. So it's considered a whole uh, organ disease, not only limited to the articular cartilage. So uh, it's a complex, there is complex, um, the pathogen um, is, there is active degenerative and repair processes of cartilage of subchondral bone with synovial inflammation. Several factors are involved, which include mechanical stress by chemical and the genetic factors we will uh, highlight uh, subsequently. Uh, chondrocytes respond to injuries by producing degradative enzymes and by developing inappropriate repair process. So this is one of the backbone of the uh, of the um, uh, pathogenesis of the OA. Uh, when there is injury, uh, chondrocytes respond by producing degenerative enzymes like the metalloproteinases. Uh, which degrade, uh, further degrade the, the, the joints um, um, structure surrounding it. So there is also inappropriate repair process. So this is just the brief of the anatomy of the joint. We can see the um, epiphyseal bone, the articular cartilage, the ligaments, uh, the joint capsule, the tendon, and the, the synovial cavity. So this all involved in the uh, pathogenesis of the uh, osteoarthritis. So OA is defined as the focal region of the articular cartilage with hypertrophic reaction of the bone, that is sclerosis. In this, uh, and also there is uh, new bone formation uh, uh, as uh, which uh, be in form, which is in form of osteocytes at the margin of the uh, joints. As we mentioned, it's a whole organ disease. The pathologist Pathologic abnormalities like uh, periarticular muscle weakness, last ligaments, low grade synovitis, meniscal degeneration, and neurosensory alteration are frequent in patients. So it's not only the articular cartilage that is involved, it involves also the surrounding structures. So, um, uh, based on the epidemiology uh, in Nigeria, the prevalence is one to three in women and then two to four among men. Uh, certainly, because men are more involved with strenuous activities and so on. So we also know that uh, the prevalence rises with age is commoner in middle age between 45 to 65 years, and then it's rare 
before 30 years. So uh, etiology uh, uh, could be primary, which is idiopathic or secondary. Trauma is a very important uh, uh, risk uh, factor to it. Um, trauma to the joint. As we, uh, if there's also fracture involving the, the joint or previous surgery to the joint uh, or chronic injury, uh, occupational or sports, uh, especially those who are doing uh, heavy weight lifting or those with rigorous uh, uh, journey um, via, uh, with food. So inflammatory aspect, any previous inflammatory processes in the joint, like the rheumatoid arthritis or goji or septic arthritis, you also predispose to the, uh, the OA. Acromegaly, hematochromatosis, uh, CCPD, diabetes are all under metabolic. So anatomic, if there is joint hypermobility syndrome, neuropathies, we know when there are neuropathies, there is uh, charcoal food and what have you, they could predispose to the uh, OA. Myopathies, limb length dis discrepancy. In this one, you know there is an even weight distribution among the joints. So the joint that is bearing more weight for the leg, uh, uh, tend to develop OA later in the life. If you facial display their congenital dislocation of the hip. So, uh, in the summary of pathogenesis, it uh, the OA results from failure of condor sites within the joint to synthesize qualitative extracellular matrix. Uh, so, due to the change in the composition of the extracellular matrix and structure, uh, and structure predisposing the tissue for mechanical fault. We know one of the function of that uh, is uh, to absorb a shock. The condor site there, the articular surface, uh, it's smooth to enable uh, smooth uh, uh, um, okay, um, smooth surface to uh, deal with any friction that will uh, cause injury there. So if there is a, uh, uh, injury to that, so that function can no more be there. So the initiation of the process, there is initiation and the continuation process in the pathogenesis of the osteoarthritis. So in the initiation process, there is complex interaction between biomechanical, bio local tissue, and cellular factors. Soluble mediators are also genetics play a uh, role there. So in the during the progression phase of the OA, the extracellular matrix of the cartilage is actively remodeled by chondrocyte under inflammatory conditions. The alteration of the ECM in turn changes the biomechanical environment on chondrocytes, which further drives the progression of the disease in the presence of inflammation. So as we mentioned that there are some enzymes that are released by the uh, osteo, uh, osteoblast. Example, the metalloproteinases that further degrade the, the uh, uh, joint structures. The uh, prostaglandin E2, and other pre uh, cytokines like interleukin 1, 8, and uh, nitric oxide they play a very important role in the pathogenesis of the, um, of the OA. So there is a bony involvement, there is some chondral sclerosis and uh, osteopathic uh, growth there. Um, this uh, is how they develop the osteophytes. Uh, this is just a summary of pathogenesis of that. So there is imbalance between anabolism and catabolism. By the left side, this is the normal histology of the joint, uh, the, the control side. Uh, by the right hand side, is uh, after the osteoarthritis has set in. We know the obesity that is increased mechanical uh, strain on the joint and subsequent uh, 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 damage to the articular surfaces. So we know obesity, one of the very important risk factors for the OA, uh, there is mechanical stress with the metabolic dysfunction on the bone and cartilage of the joint. So this is uh, macroscopically, there is reduced joint space and the thickening of the cartilage, subchondral bone, sclerosis, and the osteopathic uh, growth. And then there is inflammation of the synovial membrane. So uh, the, the picture depicting the loss in joint space and the subchondral sclerosis and the osteopathic growth uh, this is showing the same. So risk factor we have mentioned initially uh, already. Uh, these are subtypes of the joint uh, of the OA. 
uh, primary or secondary, it can affect larger or smaller joints, but more affect the larger joints, especially the weight bearing one. The knee is the commonest one, followed by hand and, and hip. So the futures include the pain that is relieved by rest, and uh, there is associated stiffness less than 30 minutes. Uh, there is reduced movement. Uh, there could be also uh, swelling uh, on examination. It demonstrates uh, crepitus. And then in, the, in advanced cases, there is uh, a deformity of the joint. So uh, the diagnosis from the history and uh, examination. And uh, uh, the investigation, the x-ray, we have mentioned the findings. Uh, MRA, we also mentioned the findings from the uh, case scenario we mentioned. So, and uh, this we have all mentioned there. So there are some noble markers uh, for the disease progression, cartilage, oligometric matrix, bone cyaloprotein, matrix metalloproteinase, and hyaluronal. So this is the diagnostic criteria. Uh, we, in brief, you can look at it. Um, for the knee OA, which is the commonest joint involved, uh, presence of the knee pain in most of the days, presence of crepitus on active motion, morning stiffness uh, last, last less than 30 minutes, age greater than 38 years, and bony knee enlargement. So we can see there are serial numbers one to five there. So it could be also presence of one to four, or one, two, and five, or uh, one, four, and five. Uh, as uh, depicted above. So this is for the hand OA. So differentials include the rheumatoid arthritis, gouty arthritis, pseudo gout, erosive arthritis. Due to lack of time, we cannot uh, uh, talk more on the differentials. So the management activities include the it's a multidisciplinary approach, uh, patient education, pain relief, optimizing of function, and then modification of the disease. So non pharmacologic uh, measures include patient education on the disease, also weight uh, lost, and then also the uh, uh, looking at the center there, uh, the blue one, education, advice, information concerning the disease, and then strengthening exercise, and then weight loss is very important. So the, the one, if patient fail to respond, we can go ahead and involve the proximal of the fail, we step ahead to use the uh, and states. So the outer cycle there, we have several options there, uh, which we can go to opioids. We have the end states, topical capsaicin. We can use support braces, shock absorbing shoes, uh, trans um, electric, transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. That is the tense there. So uh, if they all fail, we can go ahead and use intraarticular corticosteroid injection, uh, local heat or called application assisted devices, joint arthroplasty, uh, if they all fail. So now for pharmacologic, uh, we have mentioned there, these are the braces that can be used to support the knees. So the pharmacologic, we have all mentioned this one. And for the intraarticular injections, uh, the either is injection of the steroid or hyaluronic acid. We'll talk in brief about them. We have all mentioned that the NSAIDs, COX-2 inhibitors if they fail to respond to the paracetamol. So intraarticular steroid injections, uh, the mechanism is action of the steroids based on its uh, anti-inflammatory uh, role. Uh, it has a rapid onset of action and then maximum efficacy is achieved within less than a week. Okay, methylprodicinol or triptylenol are the drugs uh, uh, employed there. Uh, intra-articular hyaluronic acid injection is a major component of cyanobular fluid and cartilage. It serves as a lubricant and uh, has a role of uh, pain relief by ameliorating activities of flow inflammatory and pain mediators. Uh, it's given three to five injections a week apart. Uh, the onset of efficacy is delayed uh, for peak at three to four months and maintained for three to 12 months. Surgical intervention is the last resort if they have all failed to respond to the previous measures we have mentioned, which include the joint replacement, meaning the replacement of the articular uh, surface. Uh, osteotomy could be done, and lavage and joint debridement could be done if there is secondary uh, infection that's set in. So these are the potential targets that is going to be employed in the near future in the uh, 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 that play of the of 
Okay. Yeah, okay. thank you, Dr. Ibrahim, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the class is open for contributions, questions, clarifications. You can raise your hands electronically and make your contribution or type in the chat box. Thank you, Ibrahim, for, for a wonderful presentation. So any question, any contribution? Okay, while we are waiting, okay, Dr. Jafar gave a pneumonia for osteoarthritis, uh, for the X-ray features of osteoarthritis, loss, loss of joint pain, uh, joint space, osteophytes, uh, subarticular sclerosis, and subchondral cyst. Um, Dr. Linda is asking, what is the role of estrogen in osteoarthritis? Role of estrogen for osteoarthritis. I think that's the only question. The rest are applauding your presentation. So Dr. Ibrahim, over to you. Well, um, the role of estrogen in the OA. Well, and maybe if someone can help me and chip in, and I want to say mention something that is just so uh, uh, correct. So I don't know if she had the idea on that, she can help us share the, the information. Okay, uh, Dr. Linda, do you have any? Before Rahim speaks, do you have any anything to say? Okay, good morning, teachers. Good morning, colleagues. Um, um, okay, so I know that um, they said the reason it's not yet uh, very not very established, though. However, it's been uh, observed that in um, menopausal, well, the reason in menopausal women, um, the rise there's there's this rise in um, incidence and prevalence of osteoarthritis. And it's thought to be because um, of depletion of estrogen. And it's been found that in women who had estrogen replacement, they kind of had a lesser prevalence or incidence of um, osteoarthritis, even though um, it's not been properly elucidated as to the cause, but it's been found to um, have some protective effects on um, um, osteoarthritis. But I would um, appreciate it if, I will get some other backing because these are still postulations and I just want to know if it should be mentioned in the pathogenesis. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for, for your contribution. Um, Dr. Rahim, are you, are you there? You raise your hand. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Am I audible, please? Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. My question is just I want to know are there specific indications for intraarticular injection in OAS generally? What are these? When do we actually think of um, commencing patients on intraarticular injection? There are specific, specific indications. Thank you. Um the specific indication if patients fail to respond to the uh, systemic uh, uh, draw, the prostomal, the NSAIDs, uh, they are the first um, line of uh, management. So if patients fail to respond adequately to those interventions, so we can proceed and uh, offer them the intraarticular steroid injection. Okay. Yes, we have to uh, employ the use of the NSAIDs, the prostomol, and other oral uh, 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 analgesics. So if they fail to respond to those, then we can go ahead for the intraarticular steroid injection. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, Dr. Tanimu is asking, in the literature, females have higher risk than males. And we commonly see more females with OA than males. But can you explain the reverse? As you said, males are more affected in Nigeria. 
Did you get it? Okay. Um, from where my thought, I will lay my hands on the uh, mail. But, but actually, I quite agree with the uh, uh, contribution that uh, more in female uh, may be due to uh, the among the uh, autoimmune joint disease like the RA and what have you, which are more uh, in, 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 in women. However, uh, males are more involved with the rigorous activity, uh, contact sports, and uh, and so on. So those uh, rigorous exercise and sports, we know they are at risk factors of uh, they are risk factors for developing of OE. So this could be one of the reasons why uh, men could have a higher uh, prevalence of OE compared to men. Uh, but uh, I agree with his point that uh, they see more of women with OE than men. Uh, sorry, this is Dr. Shitsu. Just another addition to that. Um, also, because um, uh, OA is seen as a disease of uh, more in the elderly age group, because women live longer than men, okay. they are seen more in them. Just like any of the diseases that occur that are higher in the older age, that are peculiar to older ages, then yes, you tend to see yeah. more women having it because they live longer than men. All right, thank you. And also, in addition to health-seeking behavior, women tend to seek for health compared to men too. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your contribution, sir. Any other? Any other? One Muslim one, Gwegini. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can you mute me? Okay. Um. Okay, Doctor Rukaya, can you make your contribution? Okay. Good morning, our facilitators and participants. Thank you, Doctor Ibrahim, for that very extensive um, presentation. Uh, I think the male-female um, difference is the larger increase in prevalence in females tends to be especially postmenopausal, as was mentioned. So premenopausal, the difference may not be so much. And I think back when we were in med school, we had this, you know, risk factors for OA included fat female after 40 with family history, something like that. Um, then uh, in addition to the treatment, although I don't know if this is yet like um, standard or recommended or guideline, or whatever, but there are advanced pain management like genicular nerve block, which is becoming increasingly used, which uh, gives... Um, pain relief for several months. Uh, so th this is one of the newer modalities of pain management. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Luca, for the contribution. Any other question? Um, the second presenter uh, should get ready for his or her presentation. Um, Dr. Ibrahim, you can unshare while we wait for further comments and contributions. Any other comments? Sorry. So it enters into this mode. I want to go out of it. Is it what? Change the mode. You want to change what? The mode, mode. Uh, I think uh, I want to unshare so it enters. All right. Okay. Just stop sharing. Uh, it stops sharing, right? Yes, it has stopped sharing. Yeah. So, second presenter, can you share your screen? <laughs> 